Hey, hey everybody, how are you doing? Join me, my name is Tracy, I'm with Tracy's Fancy and I'm live here on the Dixie Belle Paint page. And we are gonna talk rust and patina process, which is so much fun, y'all. I have an entire board set up here and I love talking about it. So you guys let me know when you come on. Hey, Dixie Belle's on. Hello, Natalia's on. Good to see you, Natalia. Thank you for joining tonight. I was supposed to come on at seven, but I'm a few minutes late because I got lost in Dixie Bell page land, but I am here now. <laughs> yes, y'all, please, please, please. I'm gonna share a lot of information with you about the patina and rust process, and I would love it in return if you guys would share this video also. Um, Linda's on, hi Linda, how are you? And Marcy Bill, hello from Cleveland. And Nicole, hi sweetheart, how are you doing? And Sandy, hi, good to see you too. Hi, oh Kathy, mm, good to see you Kathy. Someone is at my door. Hold on just a second. Hey Matt, can you get the door please? <laughs> And there's a dog. Welcome to my home. <laughs> Hold on, I'll get it. Oh Lord. There we go. So yeah, I'm doing this live from San Antonio, Texas, guys. That's where I am. And uh, oh, gosh, oh. and this is my dog. This is my puppy. Come on, guys. Thank you. Um. We're in my home, looky here. It's cold in San Antonio today. We, are, we Texans are, we're not that used to the cold, so look what I've got. Look over there, oops, look, I have a fire roaring. I'm, I really am in my den. I'm in my family room and that's my fireplace. <laughs> and uh, we are, hey Betty, hey Bobby, how are y'all? Oh, and Dana. Oh, Dana, are y'all pretty cold there in Dallas too? Amy's on too. This is such a great turnout. Hey, Rebecca. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. Okay, so uh, beautiful day here in San Antonio. Beautiful day. I've known I was going to go live for about a week, and I knew after I painted this buffet that I wanted to go on and talk with, with you guys some more um, about the patina process because I learned so much doing this piece right here behind me in my class. I teach um, a monthly paint class, and we did this in a private class, and I thought I really, really, really wanted to. Oh, good. Who said that? Hey, Carrie, and Jean's on. Antoinette, hi, honey. Good to see you. I like. Is that your middle name? Bondi. I like that. Hey, Emily. Um, so anyway, I spent a lot of time doing it. I was like, I want to do more of this. I want to do more of this type of look mixed with my glam because I really like to do, a, you know, if you follow me, you know that, um, I like to do a lot of sparkle and gold, um, very, uh, very feminine things, but mixed up with, um, a little bit of power because I use a lot of color and, uh, Emily, you'll love it. And I think that we'll, I think we'll talk you into trying it out here. Okay. Um, Hey Adrian, how are you? Jean took my class. She sure did. So, uh, anyway, I knew that that's what we were going to do. And so on my way back today, Real quick, let me tell you, we are gonna do a giveaway, y'all, at the end of this, we are gonna do a giveaway, and um, I would love it. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is share this post, and if you will go over to Tracy's Fancy, which is my Facebook page, and um, follow me, if you will follow me there, and um, share this post, that's all you need to do. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to say what color you want, because we're actually not gonna do a color. Um, I'm gonna give away, my, I'm going to give away my choice. <laughs> I'm going to give away my favorite is actually what I'm going to give away. Uh, Dixie Bell sponsors the giveaways and, um, and then I'm matching it. So they are, Dixie Bell is giving away one jar of the eight ounce metallic, uh, sorry, it's hard to see. Let me get it where you can see it. Not going to be able to. Oh, well, this is the copper. Um, there is copper, irons, and bronze. We're going to go over those in just a minute. Um, so they are, Dixie Belle is giving away one of these and then to match it, I'm going to give away, um, one of the sprays. There's a green patina spray and a blue patina spray. And, um, so I'm going to give away my favorite combo, which I'm going to tell you which one and show you, which is my favorite in just a minute. Um, so if y'all please, please, please will share this, um, that Sue's on, Sue, my sunshine. 
Hi, honey. Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Yes, just comment shared. If you'll let me know that you've shared and make sure that you're following me on Tracy's Fancy, I would love that. And then once you're sold on how much fun this, this process is, um, you can pick some of this up at your local retailer. And if you are not aware of where your local retailer is, you know that you can go to DixieBell.com and um, they have a locate a retailer section and you can just type in your zip code and it'll tell you where your closest retailer is. If you are a click and order type person, I will share my affiliate link as a brand ambassador um, in the comments when this video is over. And um, you can just click on my affiliate link and go over and you can buy it and it'll be delivered right to your door. So whatever works best for you. So anyway, on my way home today, um, I went and delivered some painted, uh, painted wood walls that I make for a client. It was about a three hour, three and a half hour round trip drive. And um, <laughs> my nickname with some of my people is Sparkly. They call me Sparkly. Um, so they're calling me Sparkly. Um, thank you, Lynn, for sharing. Thank you, Laura. Um, so on my way back, uh, I pulled off at this little boutique that I love, and I thought, let me see. Oh, Tracy's on. Y'all, it's so hard to not say hi to everybody. Um, I was like, I'm gonna find something that I can recreate. I'm always doing furniture, and I know Dixie Belle prefers for us to paint furniture, but you know what, right now, it's the holidays, there's a lot going on, and um, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not just breaking, busting out and having huge gaps of time to do furniture. However, I need to create. I need to continue to create. So, as I get a little stressed out that 35 people are coming over or, um, you know, thinking about the mess or the menu or anything like that, I need just some downtime. And what makes me feel good is to paint. So, I really felt like I could share something smaller today because you have not as much time to do a project, possibly during the holidays, but um, you do, oh good, Kendra, see you have one 20 minutes away. That's awesome, that's awesome. So when you, if you haven't tried this yet, be sure and tell them I sent you, tell them you watched Tracy's video and that I sent you, okay? Because I love, love my Dixie Bell retailer friends, I do. Um, and I get to meet a lot of them in February and I'm super excited about that. Uh, so, Another reason I thought we could do a smaller project is I have a lot of family coming in from out of town and I have lots of kids coming in from out of town too. Um, and so I felt like we could do a smaller project because not necessarily that you want the kids messing with the patina process, but they would love to watch it happen. And, um, but I have my daughter-in-law's coming in town, I've got my sister coming in town, and it's just something that I thought we could all pull out and work on together. I love when we are all together, all the guys go do one thing and we all just sit at the table and put out a bunch of paper and work on projects together, and it most often involves paint because, you know, that's my thing, so that's just what we do. So, um, oh, Sue, good. Um, who, oh, someone's asking, oh, Linda Fluff is amazing for White Farmhouse. So yes, um, speaking of Fluff, you guys, Fluff is my favorite white paint that Dixie Belle carries, and Caviar is my favorite black, and the zebra that's right here behind me on my buffet, that is, this is actually Fluff and Caviar, both of these together. Now, do y'all see this, all of this goodness around the gold, all of that, that is a nice, grunged out patina mess and I love it. So let me show you over here also on this side. Um, let me bring you a little bit closer to some of that. Do y'all see all of this drippy goodness? Isn't that amazing? I love it. Look down here on the leg. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Let me let you get up close here. Can y'all, mm, let's see, without making you seasick. I don't want you to get seasick but that's kind of what it looks like up close. Um, yes, who said that? Someone's asking, can you patina particular areas? So if you will look at this piece, you will see that this piece is very, it's very fancy. It's still got hot pink. It's still got a lot of glam going on. It's got my gold, it's got my leopard, it's got my leopard trim down here, zebra up here. But I wanted uh, my elephant heads that I bought, I painted them gold. And I wanted them to drip and have like a drippy look like they had, you know, like they had had water run down and drip over them. So I, I decided exactly where I wanted all of my patina to go. The, the piece up there at the top, can y'all see the top up there? Um, that's another drippy place that I did. And here, look right here. 
Can y'all see that, how it's dripped down? I strategically placed all of my patina in those specific areas on purpose. So it's artistically done. It's not, this process behind me is not about just throwing the paint on there and spraying, spraying the reactive spray all over it. It's more about making it look more artistic and, and kind of real-like. Um, so that is what I did. And that is something that we're gonna talk about. What I want to do first before we actually paint a project, and this, this video is gonna be a lot of talking, so I really want you to ask questions. And I know Natalia is on here from Dixie Bell and she is answering, thank you, Natalia. She's answering a lot of the questions for us. So, um, I gotta have my coffee. Look how pretty this mug is. Isn't that pretty? Um, so yes, it is, uh, someone said that piece is really uh, funky behind you and I really, really, I thank you for that because I love it a lot. Okay, so we're gonna get into, I showed you already, the paint comes like this, it's metallic paint, there's three different color choices and then you also get a spray bottle. They also have come out with a primer um, I haven't used this yet because I haven't needed to. This is called Prime Start. And if you're planning to rust out something that's metal, anything I've done has been either glass or wood. That's where I've done this. But if you're going to be using, oh, who someone had, didn't have a reaction. Let's see who didn't have a reaction. Dara, you used it today and had no reaction. Okay, I don't, I've never had that happen ever. So, Continue watching and hopefully we'll, we will be able to answer your question. And um, I'm, I think I might know one thing. Natalia is awesome, Holly. Yes, she is. So um, anyway, if you plan on doing, let's say you have a, one of those bright, shiny farmhouse tin pails, you know, like a bucket, a pail. Um, and you don't like how bright and shiny factory that it looks and you want to grunge it out or rust it out a little bit. Uh, or maybe patina, some aqua patina around the bottom like it's been sitting in water. Um, this, you will need to use this on metal because if not, you put the metallic paint on there and then you put the reactive spray on it. It's reacting to the metallic flakes in the paint. And then if you are on top of metal, it's gonna react all the way through the metal bucket and it will rust out your bucket. So you would use this first. This says shake well, um, but I haven't had to use it yet. In fact, see, it's not even been opened. But if I, if I do get a chance or choose to do something metal, I would use this first. I would prime it, then I would paint it, and then I would use my reactive spray, okay? Um, exactly, exactly, Dixie Bell, uh, Natalia, that's, that's what I was explaining. So, okay, so that's that. So let's look at this, you guys. Let's look at the board before we get busy, okay? Here is my example board, and I used this board in my course that I taught um, last week. It, we, we had so much fun. Um, so I want you to look at this board here. What I did, because there are three different colors of paint, like I said, there's copper, which is the lightest, bronze, which is middle, and then uh, iron, which is a, like a black. It's like a smoky, smoky gray, dark, almost black color. Um, so these right here are all copper. These are your copper paint reactions. These are your bronze paint reactions. And these are your iron paint reactions. So if you wanna screenshot my board while we're talking, go for it, okay? Let me get up close. If you know how to screenshot, go ahead. Get a nice screenshot of this board. I'm holding it still. Screenshot the board. That way, um, that way you know when you are ready to do your own project, you can look at your screenshot and you can say, hmm, what kind of patina do I want? I want that patina. I want it to look like that. Or I want it to be super rusted out like that. Um, oh, Tracy made this board, board for me. So I'm going to be able to be sure and go follow Tracy's fancy, right? <laughs> no, just kidding. Not really. Go follow me. But um, you can go right there and then you'll look and see exactly what I did. How did I get that look? How, what, what did I do here? So this is how I did it. Um, I did a, you have green spray and you have blue spray. Well, on this buffet behind me, you guys, all of these areas that are, all of these areas that are grunged out, I used a mix. I used green and blue on, on all of them. So I got a special mix. So that's what made me realize I needed to do a board 
of what it looks like when you use your green spray, what it looks like when you use your blue spray, and then what it looks like when you use both sprays, okay? So let's get you up close so you can see, and let's start talking. I'm not gonna show you my face while we do this. Let's start with copper. Copper is the lightest paint in the reactive process family. This is copper with green spray. You can see the copper right here in the back. That's what the copper paint looked like. It started out as a super, super copper penny look. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna open it up and show you exactly what that paint looks like. That's copper. That is exactly what that looked like before I sprayed it. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. I put on one, two, three copper squares. Then I took my spray bottle and I sprayed green spray only on this and that's the look that I got. You can see it up close, that's the look I got. This one I sprayed blue only and that's the look I got. This one I sprayed both and this is the look that I got. Now, the last two are very similar. This one and this one are very similar. But if you step back from the camera just enough and you look, you will see that this the green spray really does give you an overall very, very, um, almost kind of a lime. It's almost got lime in there. Will it stay that copper color if you don't? Yes, it would just stay that color. It's just a copper metallic paint, absolutely. Then this one down here starts to bring in a little bit of aqua. Actually, this one's a lot of aqua, a lot. This is a bright, very bold, very prissy, very fancy aqua. There's not a lot of grunge going on with this look right here. And then down here, it's definitely a, a toned down aqua, but it's not quite as green as that green is up there. Do y'all agree? Okay, so the most bold of all of these is definitely copper. So if you're wanting a patina look that is super bold and super strong, um, I'm, I don't wanna say that it's not natural looking because I know that it is, but I mean, that's an intense patina. So if you're going for a super hot pop, which I'm gonna do to, tonight on a project, you would use these. Now, if you want more of a natural look, I would go for these. These are more natural. The natural look, the center squares there are used with bronze. Uh, sorry, you guys, usually I have Matt filming for me, but Matt is working on a pretty intensive project in our guest bath, and uh, so he's busy. All right, so this is the bronze paint. Let me show you all the bronze. This is what the bronze paint looks like. So let me compare it to the copper for you. Hold tight. You can see there is definitely a difference. This is copper, this is bronze. Okay, so the bronze is still beautiful. It's still very sheen, very metallic. Yes, Chris, you do. It is so much fun. Yeah, I'm hooked, okay? So here's the bronze. So now I've taken and I've painted this middle squares, all bronze, and then I sprayed with green, I sprayed with blue, and then I sprayed a mix. So Carla says, did you actually, no, no, no. I sprayed it, I sprayed it at the same time. So I took the one spray bottle on each hand and I spritzed that square of paint with a bottle in each hand. Just naturally let it go where it landed, okay? So I love the bronze. And like I said, that's what I did on the piece behind me. And I went for this look on the piece behind me. Now it looks very aqua too, but compare it. Look at the comparison. It's much more natural. Look at the blue comparison. It's just a more natural look. It's not as bright. And I noticed that a lot more of the bronze shows through because the bronze is darker to begin with. Whereas the copper doesn't show through as much because copper is not as bright. Okay? So that's that. Then this up here is the bronze with the green, which has a very bold breakthrough. Very, very bold breakthrough. And I did this, you guys, I started on just a natural sheet of plywood. That's all that's there. It's a natural sheet of plywood. I put um, my paint on and then I did my reactive spray. And we'll talk about the process in just a second, exactly step by step. So, oh yeah, Chrisana, yeah, that's just a piece of plywood. <laughs> that's all it is. I love plywood to play on. 
Okay, so let's talk about this over here, you guys. This one is harder to capture on film. Um, it's very hard to see digitally, but you definitely can see this right here. This is the rust. And let me show you what the iron looks like when you first get started. Now the iron, um, like I said, is more of a black. It's kind of a smoky gray. Oh my goodness, Matt, can you open this, babe? Since you just walked by at the right time. Um, something I have noticed that I will tell you, um, oh, hey, Do, how are you doing, honey? Um, Do is actually one of the first people that I did this stuff with, actually. We had so much fun, I did it on glass. Um, this is what the iron looks like. Now, it doesn't look near as metallic as the copper. See? See how reflective the copper is? I mean, I'm sorry, this is the, this is the bronze. The bronze and the copper are much more reflective paints. This is not, and it actually goes on pretty uh, sheer. The other two go on with a very opaque look. This goes on pretty sheer. Um, but you put it on, and that is exactly what those three squares over there looked like. And the top one, this is what's so crazy, y'all. This top square, I sprayed with green spray, and that's what happened. So I'm gonna bring you in close, bringing you in close. So here is green spray on bronze. That is green spray on the iron. Isn't that nuts? And then this is green spray and blue spray on the iron. And the bottom one is my favorite of all of those. Do y'all see how pretty that is? I know my spoons are kind of in the way because we're gonna use spoons here in just a second. Let me move it over. So this has rust underneath. This is a mix. This is using both green and blue. And then it's kind of uh, got this gr the cloudy, grunged out look that the blue gave, but then it brings in a green for some reason. It brings in one of these, and I don't know why that happens. But then the rust came through underneath. So that is freaking amazing to me. I, I love that one so much. Um, now, my favorite, I'm gonna tell y'all what my favorite is. So I think Dew said her favorites are with the irons. My favorite is actually with the bronze. I loved this bottom mix right here. I love the bronze with the blue and the green spray. I love that the most, which is why I did it on my beautiful piece back here because this piece, I, I, I painted it for my class and had full intentions of selling it. It's huge, it's enormous, it takes up one whole wall. Um, but my husband liked it so much we're keeping it. So he really likes the grunged out appearance a lot. So what I thought we should talk about is today when I stopped and I bought the, um, today when I stopped at the boutique when I was traveling and bought these little ornaments that I thought we would do here because I thought that's something you could do when you have family in. Um, that's fun because it's interesting because you know, people are like, okay, you wanna paint, but man, you wanna spray this stuff on and let them watch it, what happens over time? It's nuts, They'll be, it blows their mind. So I bought these, this is what I bought. These are just these little, uh, they're wooden, they're very thin, it's like a little thin balsa wood or something like that. Um, and yeah, y'all. I love that y'all are conf that y'all are discussing what y'all like the best. You, you like that, make sure, oh yeah, in a well ventilated area. Oh my gosh, y'all are just like, I've got all these brand ambassadors on here just giving all this information, I love it. Y'all just keep teaching while I talk, okay? Cause I'll ramble. <laughs> the last one showed, what was the combination? Danielle, the last one that I showed that I like, I love this one so much, and we're gonna do this one here in a little bit. Um, this one is iron, it's the iron paint. Let me move this over. It's iron paint with both the green and the blue spray at the same time. Okay, all right, so, um, so I picked these up and I thought they were really cute. They're a little balsa wood, but this is way boring to me. This is super plain. I don't, if you like this, that's great. I mean, it's very natural and woodsy and it looks great in some homes, but this is gonna get lost in my house. So um, this needs to be glammed up. So I, first of all, this bow's gotta go. I like burlap a lot. I use burlap a lot, but this bow is flat and stupid and ugly. So I'm gonna pull that off. So there, pulled that off. It was just hot glued on. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn my board. Oh, I know, I know, no, no. Let's talk color. That's what I'm gonna talk about. 
So I found these little things and I was like, mm, I want to, I want to do that, but what color should I do? And what's going to show the best on film? You know what, on um, film, I call this film, you know what I mean, digitally, on live. What is going to look the best? Oh, you are so welcome, Home Inspired. I don't know who you are. Who's, who's the name behind Home Inspired? You're so welcome. Um, what color is going to work best digitally on live for, um, for my people to see? How can I show this off the most? And then I was like, wow, that's a really good topic. That's a good topic for a live. Um, we should talk about that. Let's talk about it. So I was trying to decide what colors would work best on here. So let's talk about that for a second. Now that you've seen my board, now that you've got the board here as a referral, um, who needs to see my fire one more time? Matt just installed gas logs for us. It's been 15 years in this house and I've wanted gas logs and we finally have gas logs. So there's my fire. My fire's roaring and I love it. And I love, you know what I love the most? I love them. Oh, hey, Laura. I love the most that I don't have to have a man here to do that because I don't like building a fire. I mean, I can. Okay, I can. I mean, I'm not like, you know, naked and afraid where I can start it with nothing. But if you got a match and some twigs and some logs, I can start a fire. But I don't like having to, I never would. So I'd be like, can you start a fire? And then I'd wait all day. Man, I get up in the morning and I just start my fire before my, and I work right here in the room with the fire. I love it. Love it. No, it doesn't have a remote. I don't have the gas logs with the remote. <laughs> no need, no, no need for gas logs in Florida. Absolutely not. I am live. I am Eddie. Hi, Eddie. How are you, hun? Eddie is in my class too. She's new to my Tracy's Fancy World. I, I'm so happy that you're on here on Dixie Bell's page. Yay. Um, Christana, don't be jealous. Don't be jelly. <laughs> okay, so my thoughts on this little piece is that um, because it's for Christmas and I, I thought I would give the, I have a Christmas party to go to in a week and I thought maybe I would do this ornament. I kind of wanted to glam it out. So thank you, Jean. Thank you. It's old. My house was built in, uh, it's older than me. It was built in 64. Um, so, you know, it's kind of old, but I, we love it. We like it. Um, so I thought that I would paint this piece red because it's Christmas and then, okay, I had in mind what's going to work best with a patina. Well, what patina do I want? Do I want to paint this a, do I want rusty? Do I want to do it like an ivory color, like drop cloth, and then do a rust patina on it? No, because then I'm kind of doing the same natural woodsy look. Do I want it to be um, more farmhousey? Do I... No, I wanted to go glam, so I'm going glam. So I thought that I would for sure do one of these bold, bright patinas that are made with the copper. And then what looks really good, I wanted to do this one right here, the copper blue. What would look really, really good with the copper blue for Christmas? And then I thought red, red would. So someone's here. I thought red would look really good with that. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> So I thought we would do red, you guys. So let's paint this red. And I've got my heat gun here so we can dry it super fast because y'all know that's the beauty of Dixie Belle or any chalk paint for that matter. But that's the beauty of it. You just, uh, I got these at a boutique, um, a little boutique here in, in town. Uh, not in town, it was out of town, way out of town. And they were cheap, y'all. It was like $4.95 and it's big. See, it's, it's as big as my head. It's big. <laughs> and I like big. So, uh, so let's do this. So I have this, I have this, okay? So we're gonna talk about these, but let me get the red paint on there, and then let's hold some of these spoons up. These are Dixie Bell spoons that the, most of your retailers have in their stores, and if you know someone, like if you know a brand ambassador or a retailer, let me give y'all a little hint here, okay? Um, I own all these spoons and I answer a lot of, I answer all my private messages, by the way, if you private message me or email me through, uh, info at tracysfancy.com. I answer them. And if you ever want to see colors next to each other, find someone that's got all the spoons. It's so much more fun than just looking at the color card. So if you want to see, um, you know, uh, one of the greens with one of the reds, because you're thinking about Christmas colors. So do you want to use a bright red with a, a true green? Do you want to use 
um, tree frog green? Or do you want to use the, what's the difference between the barn red? Let me find it. Here's barn red versus honky tonk red. Well, there you go. This is barn red and this is honky tonk red. So you can see the difference between those or the difference between tree frog green and evergreen. This is evergreen, I think. There's the difference between the two greens. So what I do for my people in my class or my followers, I have no problem. I just walk in my office. I lay out the colors that they're considering. I put them on a, a dull, a, a dull, not a dull, a neutral surface. Take a picture and I shoot it to them and it's done. It helps them make a decision. Um, so we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So let me turn my board over um, and then we'll have a little bit more time to talk about uh, colors that would work well with the rust patina process because after we get this ornament going, you guys, we're gonna do this. Woo -hoo -hoo! I am, this is so Texas, right? This is so Texas. Um, this is, my husband killed this deer because he's a hunter and we eat venison. Um, and he uh, cleaned off this deer head by himself. Don't ask about that process. Uh, but we are going to paint that here. He let, he's going to let me paint it, and I've been dying to do that. So, let me get, I'm going to use, I don't use barn red very often, y'all. It's a, it is a beautiful color, but I am the, I'm more honky-tonk red. So, uh, here we go. I put a little nail up here. I'm going to nail this up for you, and we're just going to change this. And I've got another one so that when we're done, we can see uh, how glorious this piece is. My plan is to paint it red and then uh, put the, some copper patina on it strategically and then um, use gold, my gold leaf and gold leaf just the J-O-Y in the middle. So it's super gold, super gold glam in the middle and then have the patina and the red going on on the outside, the aqua patina. So that's, that's my plan. Um, if y'all wondered why I have saran wrap around my jar, let me tell you why. Um, a, any screw on paint lid, you, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but it's very hard, especially when you shake your paint, you shake it in the jar. And then, uh, that means that paint gets up inside the little screw areas and then you unscrew it, set it down. And then when you try to reapply it, it just doesn't fit very well anymore. And, um, this helps a lot. If you'll just put saran wrap with a, I buy those little baby rubber bands over it and then I can screw my lid on even if just a little bit and it stay, my paint stays great and then I can easily get it open very, very easily. That helps too because sometimes it's really hard because the good thing about Dixie Ball paint is it dries super, super hard and super, uh, it's super durable, but sometimes it's hard to get your jars back open. Yes, so I have to beat the crap out of them. So if you just use a saran wrap and a little baby rubber band, it doesn't look pretty on your shelf because it's got you got saran wrap hanging out, but that helps, okay? All right, so here we go. I've got, uh, I'm just using a one inch artist brush. I use these for almost everything. And I'm just gonna dab paint all over this. I'm just gonna paint this up. Y'all just talk amongst yourselves while I turn away here. Uh, I'll probably do this little top thing up there in gold, too. That would be pretty. It's like it's the little ornament hanger in gold. So, remember, y'all, remember, I'm not showing you how to make an ornament. That's not what this is about, okay? This is, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is not about making an ornament. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not a craft page, although I really get off to crafts. I really do like them, but I don't get to do them often enough. Uh, this is more about color and what's the best colors to use your patina uh, process on um, because not everything's going to work. You know, I if you have a black, uh, a black piece and you use that, uh, was it the blue spray, just didn't really bring much forward. On, if you had that on a black piece, you're, you're going to be very disappointed with that. Uh, final look. So I feel like we might should talk about what is going to, what colors is going to pop so that when you do use it on a piece of furniture or a door or I think, um, do, if do Dotson's still on here, I think she has her shop door, her, her door to her paint shop. Uh, I think she did like a, a patina on that and, um, it's beautiful. 
And I do those wood walls, you guys, and in my class, and I did another live video here on Facebook, and people talked about uh, how nice it would be to have a wall done and all those different patina boards, and I do think that would be beautiful. I also, I very much think it would be gorgeous to have patina done on um, like a big tabletop. And then, uh, can we do, um, don't y'all think we could do like a clear resin pour over it? so that it's got like a nice thick stand-up mirrored look off of the top of all of the patina. Because you guys, you can make a patina look without using a patina process. Sure, you can fake it with paint. You can fake it with aqua and you know mint green paint. You can fake it with rust colored paint, but it's not the same. It this These right here behind me, y'all, they're corroded. They have like texture and surface. You can feel it. Um, it gives it depth. It, um, it, it looks very, very, I mean, it is real because it's a process that actually really takes place. So uh, it's, it's very different than just faking it with paint. And why? Why fake it when you can actually have the process happen for reals? For reals. All right, so there we go. There is our honky-tonk red, my favorite red. My kitchen cabinets are red, y'all, but I think that's gonna change. I've had, they've been red for about five years and I'm kinda itching. I'm itching to change them, not sure what. Not just yet. All right, so there we go. We'll let that dry and let's talk about color. Um, is anyone in my family available? <laughs> Could you bring me a cup of water, babe, so I can put my brush in a little cup of water? Thank you, dear. So, uh, it would be, I love these lives, I really do, but it would be so much more fun if y'all could all just come over, if y'all were all just sitting in this room with me. Um, yes, uh, someone, I, I'm seeing that Dixie Bell, Natalia is answering and saying uh, that you can use gator hide. Yes, that's what I sealed this piece with me. Behind me is sealed in gator hide. You can use any of the coats for sure, uh, but this piece behind me is sealed with gator hide and it's sealed up beautifully. All right, so let's look. Oh, shoot, I need my board. Thanks, babe. Yep. All right, I need my board. So I'm gonna have to set this aside for just a second. We're gonna turn, um, we'll set this down. We'll set that down right there. All right, let's look back at the board because I'm gonna, do y'all wanna do this? I mean, I, I do feel like this is important. I really do. All right, so for instance, for instance, here is my Honky Tonk Red spoon. Honky Tonk Red. And I'm going for this. So do you see those two colors together? So if I'm gonna do Honky Tonk Red, and I'm gonna put on some of this, that is some serious contrast. That's serious. Oh, thank you, Carla. You're so, oh, thank you. I love doing lives, actually. I really like them. I wish I could just, I really wish I could just do lives every day, but I can't. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I really, really like the contrast here. I think that that looks fantastic. Now, if you don't like the honky tonk red and you're more of a barn red, that's also still, actually, honestly, this kind of looks better. I didn't know that, but that really looks good. So here's the two, there's the two reds. See that? I don't know, they both look good. I like them both. What do y'all think? Give me some love, give me some love. Let me see some hearts. All right, how about, um, okay, my favorite Dixie Bell. I have two favorite Dixie Bell colors. Can anyone guess what they are? Who wants to guess? My two favorite Dixie Bell colors. <laughs> Y'all guess. Any, who's, who's on here out of my classes? Thank you for the love. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna give y'all just a second. Who knows my two favorite, not, not the black or white, because I've already told y'all that. I've already told y'all that fluff and caviar. But as far as the colors, what are Tracy's Fancy's favorite Dixie Belle colors? <laughs> Someone knows me. There's two. Say the other one. I have two. Do you were right with one of them. I, I mean, I love them all. But there's two. I say it all the time. All right, my two favorite colors. Yes, peony is my fave. That back there is peony. Nope. It's flamingo. 
Dixie Belle, Peony, Hot Pink, and Flamingo are my favorite. Amy, yes, I do love caviar. Um, and I use caviar and fluff all the time, all the time. Where's my fluff? This is my fluff. There it is. And y'all know what caviar looks like. Well, actually, that's Midnight Sky. Let me find it. Caviar. These are my favorite Dixie Belle colors right here of all time. Of all time. Love them so much. Okay, so now I've promoted that <laughs> just because I like to. Um, so, peony and fluff. Let's look at this. Can y'all see this well? Honestly, I honestly think all of this goes with peony really, really well. Wow. Okay, this bronze green looks really good with it. Really good. Wow. How about, okay, I think, I think this looks really good. Even though it's orange and orange because this has a lot of orange on it, um, I like this. This is a coral. Flamingo is like a coral color. It's kind of a lighter coral, but I love it. Um, yeah, I think that looks really good. Although, I don't think that's what's going to look best with that. I think that the pinks and the reds all go really, really well with all of these. That one especially, and that's the one we're gonna use. Okay, so I'm thinking on the skull head, you guys. I'm thinking that I'm gonna, I want his head to be very rusty. Um, Christana, oh yeah, I love cobalt blue too. Well, let's look at cobalt blue then. Let's look at that. Let's see, here we go. This is cobalt, very, very blue. Cobalt's very blue. It is beautiful with black wax. It's beautiful with a black glaze. It's beautiful with a grunge glaze. Uh, it's beautiful with a watered down caviar paint over it. It's beautiful. So um, if we were going to do that, does that look great with these? I mean, it does. It does. It looks okay. But look at that. Woo! That looks good. Let's bring you in. That looks really good. I like that a lot. Look at that cobalt. If we, had, if we waxed this in some black and we had that rust in there, that would look amazing. All right, how about this one down here on the bottom, you guys? This one, I'm gonna bring this whole thing up. I'm gonna bring my board up higher. How about, what do y'all think about this one down here? I love this one so much, and this is what I'm gonna do on the skull head. So, not the antlers, I'm gonna do just the head, the face. I honestly was thinking that I was gonna do caviar because it brings through so much rust, so I thought I would do black, and then I like how it brings through, see the one above it just looks murky, but it does have some reaction. The one above that, okay, I'll look at that, Kristana, in just a second. Um, this one is super, super full on rust, so I don't know, I didn't think that one was gonna look as good. But this, because it pulls through some of the aqua, this is the mix, this is iron with both sprays. I thought that this could be the underlayer, and then it would pull up some rust and then some of that together. I thought that would look really good. So let's look. Christana wants to look at the Plum Crazy, which I love Plum Crazy too. Plum Crazy also looks really good with anything black on top of it also. So this is Plum Crazy. You don't want to compare it to, here's the hot pink, and then this is Plum Crazy. It's just a little bit more wine. Now we do have a wine color too. Hold on, let me find that. We have rustic red too. All right, here's muscadine wine. This is muscadine wine. These are all kind of in the same family. So we've got peony, plum crazy, and muscadine wine. So let's look at those three. Let's see here. Oh man, look at that. Look at that one. Whew, that looks really good. Those look really, really good together. Man. They all, oh, look at it with this, y'all. This looks amazing, look. All right, I'm gonna bring you in. Look how good that looks, those two. That looks so good. I love, I got quiet, didn't I? I got lost in color world, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so do y'all see how helpful these spoons are, you guys? Find yourself a brand ambassador. Find yourself a retailer that you really like to follow and um, 
uh, just shoot him a message if you're ever wanting to compare colors. It's just really fun to see the, the colors together like this in a photo versus just looking at the color. The color cards are, are great. Excuse me. Excuse me. It's my coffee. Um, peony or plum crazy for the win. I, I agree. Now, I cannot paint Matt's deer skull head uh, plum, you guys. Well... I can't. <laughs> I can't. Oh, aubergine. You want to look at aubergine? Oh, wait. It's aubergine. We have amethyst. You know what? I don't have an aubergine spoon, Carla. That was a new color that was added, and we didn't get a spoon. I only have amethyst. Amethyst purple, which actually, we should look at that. Y'all want to look at purples real quick? Um. Oh, Okay. Honestly, I like the purple with the aquas and the greens. That looks really good. I like. I like it. It's okay. It's a, it's a little bold. Look what I love it with. Holy cow. Look at that. I know. I know he loved the cabinet behind me. Isn't that crazy? But look, you guys, look at that. Can y'all see? Can y'all look at that there? Oh, that looks so freaking good. Eddie likes that. <laughs> <laughs> for the move in. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know what y'all? He asked for that. I didn't, I didn't know we were keeping it. I, I never would have thought he would like, I mean, I have hot pink a little bit in here, but not very much. It's mostly my office. Y'all have seen my office wall, right? Yeah. This looks really, really good. Amethyst looks really good with that rust. Really good. But I think, I don't know. I thought I was going to paint it black. Maybe I shouldn't. All right. Let's, Let's do, y'all are telling me to do it. I don't even have that paint out here, y'all. Y'all are, y'all are a bad influence. Um, okay, so let me turn this around and let's put our ornament back up because we're going to get busy on that process. All right, here we go. Uh, let's do this. It's dry. It's dry. Let's move it over here. Oh, I can't. I can't move it. Shoot. Oh, I think I'm a clamp. I only put one nail in the board, so, but I, look, just in case, I brought a clamp, so let's see if this will work. Hold tight. There we go. I wanted you to be able to see it on the board, not with the paint behind it. Um, I couldn't believe he liked it, Jean. I could not believe it. I love that iron with the green and amethyst. Um, which green? Which green did you like it with? The, hmm. Maybe I need to call him in here to ask. <laughs> yes, aubergine is beautiful. I have the paint. I just don't have the spoon. I should just get a wood spoon and paint it, right? Duh, hello, Tracy, that's so stupid. I don't know why I haven't done that. Um, ah, yay, Emily. I know, I know, I know. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Green spray. Do say in the green spray. Okay, so let's get going. This is dry. So what you have to do, I want to do the copper... We're going to do copper on this one because I want that uh, super bright, fun, aqua-y color on here. So I'm going to do copper, and then I'm going to use both sprays. So I've got my copper paint. This is what it looks like. There we go. That's what it looks like. It's pretty bold. Looks just like a brand new penny. And um, you do need to stir this really well, you guys. I don't have a rag out here, but I shook it up really well. Let me shake it again. Uh, it has actual metallic flakes in it. So, oh, Susie, your battery's dying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yes, I, it has like a chalky feel to it, but um, not like hard metal. Danielle's asking if it feels like metal, but it feels crusty. It feels crusty. Just like if you pick up a, a bucket that's been, you know, sitting in the bottom, it's like starting to rust out. It feels just like that. Just like it. I can do them at the same time, Laura, or separately. But I'll, I'll tell. We're gonna do that. We're gonna. I'm gonna show you in just a second, okay? So I shook this really well. It's got metal flakes that settle in the bottom, so you want to make sure that you really do uh, shake it well. So um, I know that I'm gonna put gold over this right here. I'm just gonna kind of put this all over. No, no particular way. No particular way. I do want some of my red to show through though. So um, let's just kind of brush it on like that. I'm gonna kind of brush it on where some of these little dots are here, just like that. Maybe heavier on the bottom. Maybe that's what I'll do. 
Maybe I'll leave the top and heavier with the patina uh, across this bottom bar and down here. How about that? Why don't we do that? So what you do is you wanna put it on. You don't have to put it on thick, just a little bit. Let it dry. That's what's important. You put it on and then you wanna let it dry. This coat needs to dry. I'm just brushing off some of the excess here, guys. Hold tight. All right. We're probably gonna patina the plywood too. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna dry. I'm gonna force dry this, you guys, with my heat gun, okay? Here we go. Oh, is someone just coming on from Mississippi? I was kidding, jealous. It's a brand ambassador with her thing. Oh, yeah, Emily, I know it is. All right. All right, this is a heat gun, y'all. For those of you that don't know, this is just a, a dryer. It's like a heavy-duty dryer. Um, yes, you please do not forget to share, you guys. Make sure y'all are following me on Tracy's Fancy, and we are gonna do a giveaway here at the end. Uh, we're giving away an eight ounce of the metallic paint of my choice, which is gonna be the bronze, because that is my favorite. And um, then we're gonna give away one of the sprays, um, and it's the blue, because I really, really like the bronze with the blue spray. So, we will be all over social media. Ex oh, hey, Brandy, I didn't even know you were on here, honey. Hi. How are you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to you and your precious family. Uh, thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Amy. Anyway, this is just an industrial dryer, you guys. Um, it's not a blow dryer. However, it does put a little bit of heat out. You can see my hair move a little bit, but it's mostly just a really hot, hot element that heats up red. And um, uh, it just puts out a lot of heat. The metal part here is very dangerous, you guys. It'll burn your skin right off your fingers. So. Uh, you have to be really careful. You don't want you don't want your kids using it for sure. But this just force dries your project. I will be honest and tell you guys that when I uh, did this process on the buffet, the first side that I did, I did half of the buffet right in the middle, half of it. Um, I did painted it from start to beginning, I completed it even all the way down to the gator, gator hide on one side so that my class could see exactly what we were gonna be doing. And I also posted it all over social media at that time. Um, then, uh, so I let it happen naturally. It takes up to about six hours for you to get all of the patina process to happen. Now, you paint it, you let it dry, you put another coat of paint on, which I'm gonna do in a second. You're gonna add one more coat. And then while it's wet on your second coat is when you make your spray. That's when you spray. And that's when you'll start to get your reaction. It doesn't always happen immediately. It takes about six hours. I did mine um, all of that one side that I completed before my course. I did it and then I went out for the day. It was gone all day and I came home. <laughs> yeah, I wish someone could have had my, seen my face. I came home, I went out into the shop, I opened the door and I was like, Whoa, whoa, oh my gosh. I mean, before I left, it was a little bit turning aqua in some places. And I was like, oh, cool, yeah, that's gonna look good. That's gonna look really good. And then when I got back home, I was like floored. I was like, yes, I love it. Okay, so that's great, right? I let it happen organically. I let it happen naturally. Um, so then, thank you, Dana. So then, um, yes, I was so happy. It was almost like going to bed and waking up in Santa Claus had come, you know, I was like super excited. But then with my class, we did it live during the course over about a three hour class online. And um, I was like, why well, don't use my heat gun? Because you can force the process a little bit. It does affect it somewhat. You do not get quite as brilliant of a finish if you force it. And we're gonna force it tonight, so I want you to know that. That, and Dixie Bell will tell you that yes, you can use a heat gun to help it along a little bit, and that is true. And that's, I'm a heat gun user, I am impatient as heck. But in comparing the two, the organic way and then the, the forced way, I got a better reaction without forcing it. So I'm just letting y'all know that. Okay. So this is dry, it's already dry. So now I have my brush and I have my copper paint again, and I'm gonna just dip it a little bit, right there, just a little bit into my, um, into my paint, and I'm gonna add another coat here. And so now it's a, a wet coat. 
and we are gonna spray. We're gonna spray on this. At the same time, we are gonna use the blue and the green at the same time because we, on the other side of this board, uh, showed y'all that was my look that I wanted to go for here, okay? All right. Now, I'll probably, after this happens, I probably will go back and add a little sprinkling of some rust, I mean, a patina up at the top. Okay, here's my two spray bottles. I've got the green and the blue. You ready? We're gonna spray a little bit here. I'm just gonna spray at the same time. Didn't quite get a lot of blue out of there. It's way more than I need, but I'm doing like an overkill. Uh, <laughs> Kylie, ripping up veneer, that's horrible. I hate doing that. Okay, so it is now sprayed. I will also tell you, if your piece is gonna drip, you're gonna get a lot, if you're doing this on furniture, do you see this natural drip? So wherever you spray, you're gonna get a natural drip. And I did get some of that. You can see some of that here on my piece. You can see some of the natural drip come down over my zebra. I fought it a lot on my zebra because I didn't want a lot of my zebra covered. But um, you will get that. So just imagine if this whole thing were your furniture, you would get some drippage drippage. Uh, if not, if you want to lay your piece flat, I do think that the flatter surfaces without the running off, you lose a lot of your react reactive spray when it runs off. I do think that um, you get a little bit more bold statement if you can make your piece flat. So if you're working on drawer fronts or something or a dresser, if you, if you, if you want more just like pop reaction and not drippy reaction, maybe lay it over on its back and do your sprays and let it sit in its sort of petal, um, you might get a bolder look. Okay, so I'm gonna bring you guys in a little bit closer. Oh, my battery's going down. We might not get to the skull. All right, let's see, here we go. I'm gonna, I don't know if y'all can see that very well. Let's see, hold on. There we go, you can see that. Here we go. I'm gonna force it a little bit, so we'll see. Yes, you can, Lori, that's a good question, and absolutely you can do that. Um, I have used a sponge uh, to do that, to put it exactly. Yes, lay it flat and puddle. That definitely, you get a better, a better reaction out of that. But a lot of us really like that drippy look, so um, let's see what we get here. Let's see if we can force this along. Um, that's like it needs to be... Uh, Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to move y'all in close. Can y'all see that? On the side, maybe. Look at that. It's already getting super light. So it's forcing along pretty well for you guys. You're going to be able to see it pretty good. It's drying. And we're getting some aqua on there for sure. I've blended the sprays with a brush too. Oh yeah, Brandy, you can do that too. You can brush on. I actually like to spray out. Um, sometimes I spray out on a paper plate and I just keep re-dipping on the plate with my brushes and uh, putting it in different areas and that works really well too. And I think you could do a really good splatter technique also. All right, so we've got, um, if, I think it's not gonna be super bright right now because I'm gonna, I keep putting this heat gun on it and you don't get as much. But I wanna show you right here, look how fast that happened though, but right here where this puddle is, if I leave that alone, that will get nice and crusty. Like where the, there's a puddle there. If I hit it with my fingernail, it would break it off and make it run, but I don't wanna do that. If I uh, let that puddle, it's gonna get nice and crusty right there. It's starting to get a little crusty up here and anywhere that it's thicker on the edges. If you can see that where it's starting to lighten up a little bit. So Cheryl asked, Someone asked what the original color was. The color underneath is red. That's um, honky tonk red. And then I used the copper patina. So this is what the paint looked like. Looked just like this. And then I used the blue and the green spray and it gave me that uh, coppery look. So I really do, I don't really like that super hard division, but just so that you could see the difference, 
Um, but I really do think that I'll go in here and add some more up here. And then I'm gonna use gold, uh, gold foil to do the joy in the middle. And I think that that is gonna be a huge difference from, um, from this very boring joy sign <laughs> that we had. And I'll, maybe I'll tie like some, you know, gold beads or something, something fun and flashy on the top instead of just the boring burlap bow. I mean, I love burlap, but I wanted to kind of bling this out a little bit. So, so that's that. All right, let's throw some paint on this skull real quick. I even made, I made this hook so we could do this. So let's put this up here. Hold tight. There we go. So there's our skull. And we'll move this little puppy over a little bit. Oh, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna move it. Actually, I don't wanna move it because I don't wanna mess with my puddles. I like my puddles that are happening. All right, so this skull, uh, I'm gonna paint in caviar. All right, let's look and see if I've got some questions. Boy, I learned something new every life. Thanks so much, Dixie Bell. Uh, love the transformation so far. Beck says hi, hello. Hello, how long have we been on, guys? Oh, crap, we've been on an hour. Um, I need to hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, just a little bit more, guys. I really do wanna throw some of this on here and see if we can get a little bit of rest. I won't finish this with you guys, but let's just do a little bit, okay? Here we go, painting right straight on Dixie Belle paint, no primer, just straight on the skull, just like that. This is actually kind of cool. Maybe we'll just do... Maybe we will just rust out the bottom part, who knows? But I won't finish this with y'all. Let's, let's put some up coming out from under here. <laughs> let's do that. All right. Okay, so that's done. Now let's let that dry. I'll answer any more questions. Uh, we're gonna put, we're gonna, we're gonna rest that one out, guys. This one we did patina, we're gonna rest this one out. So we're gonna use uh, iron, we're gonna use the iron metallic paint, and um, then we're gonna use the, what reactive? Both, we're gonna use both the blue and the green reactive spray. So, um, a glittery bow, absolutely, that's what I planned. Love that skull, I know, thanks, thanks Brandy. Matt killed that deer, I don't know, a long time ago. And I forgot what that's called. What's that called? A European mount, I think, when they take all the... Um, hey, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Shelly, I'm in San Antonio. Did you know that? With all you showing up, Patina works not as far anymore. Good, Lynn. That's the point. <laughs> that's why we do this. Uh, where can you get these products? Uh, the products are Dixie Bell paints, and you can get them from a local retailer near you. You can go to DixieBell.com and look up for a local retailer on their page. Or um, when this is over, I'm going to post my affiliate link in the comments. And uh, you can just click on my affiliate link and order it and they will deliver it to your door, Cindy. Um, and it's the patina spray, the patina kit, basically. And at the end of this video, I am gonna do a giveaway, actually. Um, just received gold, silver, and rose gold leaf paper today, Jean, that's awesome. Um, is it a real school? Yes, it is real. <laughs> it is real, he killed the deer. I think I'm behind here. Linda's having a date roll because we preach healthy living in Tracy Fancy World. <laughs> healthy, healthy eating and healthy living. Um, thank you, Samantha, thank you so much. Okay, so I think my caviar is dry. That was caviar in black. And let's get out the iron, which is right here. The iron is, like I said, it is not as brilliant in metallic look. It's not as reflective as the copper and the bronze are, um, but it rusts out like hardcore rust really nicely. So uh, I'm just gonna dip my, I shook it really well, dip my brush in it. Let's paint some of this iron on there. This is how you do it. It's exactly how you do it. You put your paint on, uh, it felt like the hokey pokey. You put your right foot in, uh, you put your paint on, and then you're gonna let that dry. And then you're gonna go back and do a second coat. And while the second coat is still wet is when you're gonna do your spray. And we're gonna do that right here, right now. And I gave, I did give a little disclaimer and said that when you force it with a heat gun, you do not get as brilliant of a reaction. Like this reaction right here is not as brilliant um, as, as I would have gotten had I left it alone and let it do its thing over uh, several hours. So, uh, yeah, he hunt, did I say he hunted it? Did I say that? Oh my gosh, I, I promise you guys, 
I was a really good student. I actually have a really good grammar. But if I said he hunted it, he hunted it. And I sounded very Texan. Um, sorry about that. But he did hunt the deer. He hunted down the deer. He uh, shot the deer, killed the deer, and we ate the deer. Um, but he did this European mountain. He did it himself at home on my stove. You don't even want to know the details. I will tell you this. Me and my uh, daughter had to leave and go to the movies. I will tell you that. So, do you remember doing that, babe? He's, he just walked in behind us. Okay, when you boiled the head on the stove in a pot. Oh, he says it was a different deer. Did you do this one? Yeah, but I left it outside and let it. Oh, you left it outside and let, let, it, the let the insects do it. Okay, so this one, I'm sorry. This is not the one that he boiled. Sorry for those of you that are vegan, and this is freaking you out. Um, can you repaint it over if you don't like the way it comes out or uh, heat gun and let it dry on the second time? Yes, you can paint over this. Let's say that I did this in the patina and I didn't like it, then yes, I think that very easily I could just paint over another metallic color on top of that and spray that. Who knows what you'll get? It's kind of a surprise, but um, someone said, oh, hell no, they got theirs at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Okay, do you see that one up there, Brandy? That is from Hobby Lobby. That's a Hobby Lobby one. Yes, ma'am. But, you know, I mean, hey, when your husband does it and he brings them home, I can turn it into a project. Do you know, do y'all know how many of these I've decorated, painted, designed, pearled, laced, glittered, painted, 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 all of the above? Um, how would you paint back over it? Do you need to seal it first? I don't even think you would need to seal it, honestly. You lost me at the cleaning part. Okay, this one he said he did not boil it. This one he left outside on the deer lease over a couple of months and let it decompose on its own. He let the bugs do the job. So, enough of that. Honestly, whoever's asking, can you do it on top of it? I can't, I can't really truly say for sure because I haven't done that. But uh, I do think that you could do that without sealing. I think you could just try it again. Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. I got my iron metallic paint again, and my metallic paint is dry, and I'm going for it again, putting it on. Now remember, I told y'all that this is hanging, so it's going to drip off, and uh, it's much better, you'll get a better look and a better reaction if you could lay your project down on a flat surface so that not as much drips and runs, unless you're completely going for the drippy running process like I did back here. These, um, I would rather lay it down on a flat surface, but then you guys can't see the project as well. So, I decided that we would do it just like this. So we are going for a rust look with a little bit of blue green in it. So I'm using both of the sprays. I'm using both the, the blue and the green at the same time. Here we go. Got my two sprays. Here we go. Ready? Let's do, let me move my cute little leopard jeans. Here we go, let me spray. This blue one doesn't wanna work as good, hold on. Come on, there we go. That's what the blue spray looks like. Here we go, blue, green, blue, Green, blue, green, green, blue, green. All right, so it is sprayed. It's already starting to rust. Some of the drips that are coming off already have uh, a rusty look to them. It, it really kind of does it pretty fast. So I'm gonna bring y'all in closer and let's see if we can watch some of this live. Let's see, hold up. There we go. And can y'all see that pretty good? All right, here we go. I'm gonna see if I can force it. I hope I, I hope I can. I mean, I made that board myself, y'all. So I, I promise, um, when you do it unforced, you get a better look. But here we go. We're looking for a little bit of rust, a little bit of blue green. See what happens. I don't want to hold it on there. Come on. 
do something amazing for us. Y'all watching? Are y'all asking questions? I'm sure Natalia's answering for y'all. Uh, no, I did two. I did two. I did two coats. I did one and then I let it dry and then I went back and did a second coat. But uh, yeah, your results are going to be a lot better if you do two coats. And this did get two coats. It did. It looks very, very much like iron right now. I'm trying to see if I can force some rust on there. I don't know if it's going to happen. I can see rust coming through, but I don't think you guys can see it yet. It's in here. It's, it's spotty. It's coming in spotty. Oh, yeah. I can start to see it now, you guys. Can y'all see that up close? Let's see. I uh, know it's just getting dark, isn't it? It just gets dark. Yeah, that's not going to show for you. I'm going to have to let this one do it on its own. Maybe if we talk a little bit longer while it's hot, I'll let that dry, and maybe we'll be able to pull some out. But, um... Oh, sure, sure, Carla, no problem. Uh, let's see. Iron takes a lot longer. It does, but it, it's amazing because uh, I can tell that I'm going to get some of that orangey rust coming through already. It just takes a little bit longer. Now, let me show you all up close here, guys, the drips. Do you all see the, how the drips came out real aqua right here on the backboard? And then I told you that this one right here would do it. So, I mean, right back there, y'all, that's what I have to say. That, that was done just like I did, just like I did for y'all, just like that, but it happened organically. I didn't rush it. Um, for those of you that came on late, let me show you an up close of the drippy goodness that's happening on that piece. How is that for looking like a sunken treasure? My drawers are open. See how pretty? Isn't that gorgeous? And I let, look down underneath. Can y'all see down underneath? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is peony and black. And then I used the uh, bronze. I used bronze spray, uh, bronze paint and both the copper and the blue spray. And I got all of that goodness. Looky here. You like? Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Lynn. There it is up there. Good? Good, good, good? Y'all believe me? <laughs> Nothing special. I did just what I did right here. It's just I let it happen naturally. So it looks better. And this is coming too. It's just going to take a little bit longer. So anyway, that is it, you guys. Let me, um, I can't even turn my board around right now, but I hope that you screenshotted it. If you came on late, if you will go back and watch this from the beginning, I did do a sample board. It's a really good example of how every single color works with every single spray. So if you will uh, just rewind, maybe watch from the beginning or fast forward through until you see the board, screenshot the board, and then you can save that on your phone and when you are ready to do a project you can literally just go pick out what color patina you're looking for what color rust you're looking for and then you it says right below it if it was blue or green spray or if it was both sprays and what color paint it was so I hope that you find that helpful uh, my girls and I my ladies and I and my class we had a blast on that video back there I would love love it for you guys to come over like I said and follow me at Tracy's Fancy and um, can you post pics of it Yes, I will post a pic, Brandy. I'm going to post my affiliate link in here, you guys, so that you can order online. And then I'll also post a picture of my sample board, the same one that I posted in my group for my girls. So um, I tell you what, let me, y'all give me just a second. I'm going to pick someone right here and right now. I'm going to go all the way back. Oh my gosh, y'all have been so active on here and I just love it. Let me go back here to the back and see. <laughs> this might take a while. Uh, how about Jamie Knowlton? Jamie, J-A-I-M-Y-K-N-O-W-L-T-O-N. Jamie Knowlton. Jamie, you are the winner of a bronze paint 
and a blue spray. You are the winner of my favorite combination of the metallic patina set. So if you will please go to tracysfancy.com, Jamie, and uh, private message me. I need you to do that. Go to tracysfancy.com, private message me, and um, I need your all of your information. And I will. I need your name, your phone number, your shipping address, and your email. Um, if you will send all of that to me, Dixie Bell will be so kind to get that product out to you. So I thank you guys for hanging with me so long. It's been super long. We've been on about an hour and 15 minutes playing with this stuff. So it was wonderful to see all y'all. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful, happy Thanksgiving and that you get to spend it with friends and family. And um, if you know anyone that's gonna be alone this Thanksgiving, please bring them in and share the love because that is just what it's all about, okay? Um, Y'all have a wonderful Sunday night. It was my favorite day of the week and it ended on a great note right here with you guys. I appreciate you all so much and thank you Dixie Bell for such wonderful product and uh, being so good to your retailers and your brand ambassadors and to your customers. I really enjoy working with y'all. Y'all all take care. Bye all of my uh, brand ambassador friends that were on here. Thank you so much for being here. And all of my followers, thanks for coming over here to Dixie Bell Page. It's a great place to be. We'll see you guys soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.